sure, I don't know if most of you guys have done this, but I have, where you'll hang out with a friend and maybe he'll hit you in the shoulder and you put him back and then you guys will keep going back and forth until you both leave and then you're like, all right, do you truce? And you're like, all right, and then it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I do it a lot. <laughs> so I picked a, on my topic to be a quote, it's far easier to forgive an enemy after you've gotten even with him by Miller. No first name, so Miller. And <laughs> <laughs> I believe this quote is true. And I can think of three instances where that has applied to me. One is which I got in a fight with my friend shortly after we became friends and another one's when a pe bunch of people played a prank on me with my car and I got back at them. And the other one's from a high school football where we lost a game and then we won and we're all friends again. So the first one where I got in a fight with my friend who was in high school and he stole twenty dollars from me and I cared back then. Um, I don't know. I still care a little bit. I don't know if I'd fight him. And I was like getting mad at him at lunch, and he's like saying like, "Oh no, it was, it was his, but clearly came from my wallet. And now it wasn't there anymore. He was the one holding the wallet." So, and it became like this thing for like a couple of days, and all like one day we just kind of like fought it out. It was like a weak fight. It wasn't cool or anything, but I hit him, he hit me, and then after that, he's like one of my best friends now. <laughs> and the second one would be a prank that my friends pulled on me after a, we were working out one time in the weight room for a football practice and I came out and my car had been turned. They actually went out and turned the car to where I couldn't get out of the parking lot. <laughs> it was like stuck sideways between two other cars and I had to wait for them to leave or else I do that Austin Powers thing all day. Katie, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. Um, and so the next week, I didn't get him all back, but I knew the guy who told him all to do it. So during when he was lifting, I stole his keys and we moved his, we drove his car out into the middle of the football field. And we did a bunch of things and it was cool, but <laughs> so that was, we were fine after that. And uh, then the last one is. Like with most high school football teams, there's always that one big rival that you all hate. And we had lost to them the year, one year, and like whenever people would ask me, like, oh, do you guys know people from there? I'm like, yeah, I know. I hate them all. There's like everyone just hated them. And then after, and then the next year came, we finally beat them. And people would ask me about them, like, oh, what do you guys think about this team? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're good. I like them. Great bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> So that is why I feel that um, quote is true and how it's affected me. Thank you.
All right, Chris, you've got a good idea here. Uh, I like the visualization that you have at the beginning. You've got a transition to the topic. You identify what your thesis is going to be. Uh, you've got a setup of what the content's going to be about. Although it really feels a little bit like you're going through the motions on this. You've got the structural ideas right, but you need to pull it together so that there's a point that you're making. It, it really feels like you're going through the building block, block process. Okay, now I've got this, now I've got this, now I've got this, and it needs to feel a little bit more like it's organic as you're, as you're presenting the speech. Uh, your stories are fine, and they illustrate the point that you're talking about. Sometimes I think you could add a little bit more to them to add some interest, but uh, I think we enjoyed hearing about your uh, pranks and uh, you know the stuff that went on with the uh, rival high school team I think could use a little bit more elaboration. The presentation issues, this is where there are a few uh, things that you want to be careful about. You seem to be standing a ways back from the audience. You stay in that position the whole time so there's not much body movement, no emphasis there. You're not moving on the transitions. You, it looks defensive in that situation. Your voice, we can hear you pretty well, but your energy level and the pacing is all pretty much the same. And there's not any uh, excitement, enthusiasm, uh, friendliness, uh, anger. You need to get a little bit more variety, excuse me, variety and energy in the presentation. Uh, so that it, you sound a little bit bored, like, well, I'm telling this story, and now I'm telling this story, and now I'm telling this story, and here's another story, and here's another story. And you need to have a little bit more personality when you're telling the stories. Uh, you know, react to it a bit. I, I know that you're kind of a quiet sort of person, but remember you're doing a performance thing, and you need to have you know, a little bit of a kick here and there, and maybe a, a little bit more facial expression, too, instead of sleepwalking through the presentation. You know, I, I, I don't mean to suggest that that's what you're doing, but you need to have uh, some effort here. We're listening to a lot of speeches every day. If you don't make the effort to make it special, the audience will tune out on you. All right, thank you.